It's a bomb. This extension of chapter 9, section 1 is entitled the squeeze method. Now the squeeze method is a method for closely approximating the value of a square root using a succession of halves. Now, there's actually several different variations on this. They require a little bit of higher level math though, because what they do is they say, okay, instead of me trying to approximate this using halves, I have a general knowledge of math and I can tell you that this square root has got to be pretty close to this. So instead of looking at a whole number range, I'm going to start with a very small range of numbers and work in a similar pattern. Well, that's fine and dandy, but as I said, the problem is you've got to have a knowledge of some higher level math to do that. And we don't have that at this point. So the best thing we can do is the most generic form of it, which will help us come to a close value, not necessarily the greatest value, but a close value. Now, you are going to need the square root table and the half table I gave you last week. I told you not to lose those, and I know some of you already have them. No, I don't have extra copies, so you're out of luck on that. Right? As far as the half table goes, the half table is what we really need to help us go through the path. And you can do it without the half table, but usually I don't get complaints about how difficult the half table is. Usually most people say, well, the half table makes this so much easier. But you do what you got to do. As you can see in the examples, they're all set up the exact, exact same way, and they're all set up that same way in the homework. There's two number lines, six Roman numerals for your work, and then a spot for your solution. Your solution is actually going to be a range of numbers. It's not going to be like a regular problem where we just say, oh, this is the answer. There's actually going to be two numbers and it's going to be a range. Because the squeeze method is actually something you could do in many more steps. We could go out 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 steps and get a better answer every time. All right, last year when we did this, we only went out four steps, I think. Right? This year we're going to go out six and get a little bit more of a precise answer. You will need a calculator to come up with some of the work here. Um, I'll go give you the answers here, but you will need a calculator probably in the homework tonight to come up with some of the answers. All right, so example one says the square root of 17. Now to start off, you're actually going to start on the square, square root side of the table. You're starting off on the side of the table with the bold black line down the middle. Now, remember, we read it for our purposes for square roots from right to left and not left to right. So I'm looking for 17 on this side. Well, you're not going to find 17 on this side, but you are going to find the two numbers that 17 would be between. 17 would obviously be between 16 and 25. So you're going to take the square root of 16, that's 4, and the square root of 25, that's 5, and that's where you start. So 4 and 5 are going to go on the outside of my number line. Now, again, the squeeze method involves taking halves. So you've got to cut it in half now every single time. So I'm looking for the number that's halfway between 4 and 5. That's an obvious one. I would tell you if you're struggling with that part, think of it in terms of money. And you women, when I say in terms of money, you always seem to come up with the answers real fast. It seems to work that way. I don't know why, but it does. Right? So if I think of it like $4 and $5, the amount in the halfway in between is $4.50. Now, we know about the relationships between squares and square roots, so now what I'm going to do to come up with that square root is I'm going to take that number and square it, which is what goes in step number one. And I take 4.5 and square it. 4.5 squared is equal to 20.25. Now, we know about 20.25 because what we're going to do now is compare it to this square root. Just like that table, if I read it this way, it's the square root. So the square root of 20.25 is equal to 4.5. Well, 20.25 compared to 17, that's too big. All right? It's bigger than 17. I want to get close to 17. Too big. So logic tells me that anything bigger is only going to get further away. So what I do is I go up to my number line and say, okay, this is too big, nothing bigger is ever going to work. So I cross out the range of everything bigger. No. 
right? So now I'm going to take a half again, but I'm only going to work in the range I have it crossed out. So now I'm looking between 4 and 4.5. Again, think of it like money. Between $4 and $4.50 would be 4 and a quarter. 4.25. And again, like I did last time, I'm going to take that number, 4.25, and square it. And I take 4.25 and square it, I get 18.0625. <coughs> now, remember, my goal is to get to 17, or as close to it as I can get. 18.0625 is still too big. So I've got to take out everything bigger. Because again, nothing bigger is like we're going to get any closer. So I'm going to get rid of everything bigger than this. And I cross out that. Right. So now I'm looking at the range between 4 and 4.25. Now this is where you could figure it out, but it's starting to get maybe a little bit complex. This is where it would not be a bad point to use the chart. The chart is easy enough to use. I'm looking at the range between 4 and 4.25. What you do to read the half table is you put your fingers on the two numbers you're looking at. In this case, the point zero and the point two five. You're only worried about what's after the decimal, not what's in front. Pull your hands in the middle and read to the right, and you'll end up with the next number, and this one ends at point one two five. So the next half has to be 4.125. So I'm going to take 4.125 and square it. 4.125 squared is equal to 17.015625. What? 17.015. 625. Now that's a good number here, right? Because remember, my goal is to get to 17. I'm at 17.01 and then some. So I'm really, really close here. But the number is still a little bit too big. Just barely, but it's a little bit too big. So I've got to cross out now again everything bigger than it. Because nothing bigger is ever going to get too close to it. Now, as you can see, what I haven't crossed out there is getting pretty small, which is why there's a second number line. At this point, I take what I haven't crossed out and bring it down to my next number line. Some of you write a little bit smaller than I do and don't need to do this, but I do. So I'm going to take these numbers I haven't crossed out, 4 and 4.125, and bring it down here. That's what the other number line is. It's not a trick. I'm just trying to make it so I got enough for you to write. Okay. So now I'm looking for the number that's between the double zero and the point one two five. So, again, put your fingers on those, draw out of the middle and read right. This one ends at point oh six two five. So my next path is four point oh six two five. Take four point oh six two five. Square it. 4.0625 squared is 16.50390. Okay. 